Confederates in a field or on the road, the tactical principles are mostly the same. Let's have a look at you're basically sight and ambush. And let's say we're going to ambush a road and we're going to ambush some troops that are moving on. If we take this as the road, and this will be the killing ground. If it's a road, you'll want to bend either end. Bend hide what's coming around the corner. And ideally, you want to make sure the other side of the road place where people can get out of vehicles and take cover. So you're trying to get areas maybe with higher ground up top so they've got nowhere to run. So this is your killing ground along that area there on the road. Now what you've got to do is set up your three main groups. First of all are the killing groups. And they're going to be along that area there. Armed with assault rifles and rocket propelled grenades, this group aren't alone. Nearby there are other groups with crucial roles. You've got a road here, which is obviously a natural escape route, so vehicles might be able to rush forward, coming out of the ambush, or back up, and even troops to rush. They've got two cult groups. Positioned either end of the ambush, these guys will hit anything trying to escape the killing ground. Do this properly, and no one's getting out alive. Also, what you could do is then put out, certainly insurgents have put out IEDs along the road. So if there is any escape vehicles, basically hit those IEDs and take them away. The commander will initiate the ambush when the killing ground is packed with enemy troops. Maximum chaos, maximum targets. As they move through into the killing ground, it would be the commander's job to initiate the ambush. And the whole principle is, the moment he says, go, everybody fires at once. It all did seem, you know, it seemed like the beginning of the end of the world, really. So many people were firing and everyone was firing in every direction. In this kind of chaos, leadership is crucial. The sergeants and officers will be looking to regroup their men so they can re them to give cover and fire and at the same time get on the radios to call me their support. A good idea in theory, but with Major Paddy Blair and Sergeant Major Mick Bolton separated and still in contact with the enemy, the Paris Command and Control was being tested to the limit. Oh, I was in a ditch and there was rounds. You see it on the film, you, the, the explosions all around you. I, I was pinned down, I couldn't, I couldn't move. Uh, the OC was shouting uh, for me, I mean, I just couldn't move, I was pinned down. We were starting to get encircled by, uh, by Taliban. I could see that some of them 20 metres away. The red dot base started getting to get out. I said, I'll see you later, I haven't got time. We're going to get rolled up here, and if we don't move here, we're all going to die here. My father was in the army, uh, I had a brother in the army, and um, I thought that was a natural progression for me to go into the forces when I was um, just reaching my 22nd birthday. My job as the Sergeant Major is making sure it, it, it all comes together and it all runs smoothly, making sure the guys are not firing too wildly, not firing too much, dealing with any casualties, uh, and generally pushing the guys forward. Yeah, with a bit of encouragement and the old kick. And it was at that point that Mick said to me, you know, he said once they get one, they'll get three, and once they get three, they'll get five or eight. He said once eight of us have gone, we've got half of our firepower, and then they'll get closer. And once they get closer, they'll get more accurate, they'll get more of us. And once they get closer and they overrun us, they'll roll us. He said we'll get rolled up. And I said if we get overrun, everyone will have to fight. With communications restored in headquarters, it looked like they were about to get it. Uh, we were told that we would have two uh, American A-10 aircraft with this in about 15 minutes. Two, three, zero, four. Five minutes after that, we were told, actually, um, that wasn't going to be the case. Another incident was happening elsewhere and that we wouldn't get any air support. And it was that stage that it really struck me that um, we were on our own and, and we were going to have to get out of this uh, by ourselves. Surrounded. Deep behind enemy lines, with only small arms to defend your position. A pretty desperate situation. Unless you're a power. Since World War II, the 
these lads have been dropped into enemy strongholds and told to hold their ground, no matter what. The history is pushed into the private soldier, where the regiment has been, and uh, what we've done from the Second World War, everyone remembers Arnhem, the soldiers went in, outgunned, outnumbered, and, and they held on. is now at stake. They've got to defeat the Taliban ambush. To achieve this, they'll have to make some tough calls. The main problem that anyone who has got who gets caught in an ambush is to try and get out of that killing area. But they know...